welcome or welcome back to my channel it's the girl daisy budgets and over here on my channel i do savings challenges sinking funds updates cash stuffings a little bit of everything so if any of that sounds like something you might be interested in make sure to like comment and subscribe and smash that notification bell to be notified every time i upload a new video okay so today we're going to be unstuffing my bill binder for the month as you guys already know i am a month ahead on bills which means the money that i am unstuffing will go towards paying the bills for november so november's bills will be all paid and then the money that you see me stuffing in the month of november will go towards december's bills hopefully that makes sense okay so before i get started i figured while i was unstuffing and setting everything up that can be like a little boring um so i won't be or should i count it i don't know should i be counting the money I should probably count the money, right? But I figured I would give you guys a little story time. Um, by the time you watch this, spooky season is over. However, it is still spooky season as I am filming this. So I was thinking about the time that I lived in a haunted house and I did live in a haunted house. If you guys have been with me for a while, you know that I have moved over 20 times in my life. And so needless to say, when you move that many times, you're going to come in contact with a house that is a little off let's just say so um while i am unstuffing and setting this up i figured i would tell y'all a quick little story so when i was 11 years old we moved to an apartment in brooklyn new york it's actually on 73rd street and 20th avenue well it's it's in the cross between but it was closer to 20th avenue i remember i was about 11 years old and when we pulled up to this house, I remember just feeling like something was off. Like usually when we moved, I never really enjoyed moving, but this time in particular, I felt like a little creeped out. Um, there was nothing really wrong with the house, like from the outside looking in. It was just a feeling that I got. In the front of the apartment, when you're looking, when you're standing in front of it, there are these three huge windows but they're put together in a way where it looks like one massive window that was the front bedroom and so because we were just moving in there was no curtains there was no blinds there was no shades and so it was a sunny day when we moved in i remembered because i remembered thinking why is it so dark in there because when i was looking up at the window it was like pitch black and there were no curtains no shades no nothing on this sunny day mind you so when you got into the apartment, you would walk up the stairs, there would be another door, you would unlock it, and you would be in the kitchen. The kitchen was the center of the house. It was like um, a railroad style apartment. So when you walked in, you were in the kitchen, and then there was a doorway right next to the kitchen door. It was like an open doorway. So if you would go through that doorway, there would be the dining room, and then in front of that would be the living room, and in front of that, there would be a bedroom, right, which is that first room. So going back to the kitchen, so now we're back in the center of the apartment, there would be a hallway if you walk ahead, and there would be a bathroom, my brother's room, and in the very end was my mother's bedroom. Okay, so we get it. So it's like a railroad. Like I said, we walked into the apartment. We were scoping things out. And each room, like there was a big window in the kitchen. There was two in the dining room. There was two more in the living room. And of course, the massive windows in the front room. But the apartment was still dark. It was dark. It was just really eerie. It came off very ominous to me, even at that age. So the event that I'm going to tell you about actually happened after several other things have happened, but I wanted to tell you this one because I was just thinking about it the other day. So I've always suffered from like tonsillitis and strep throat and things like that. So I happen to have had uh, tonsillitis during this time or strep, one of those two. And I remember at that time, my father was staying with us because I don't know what happened to his apartment, but my mother was allowing him to stay with us until he can find a new apartment. So I was really happy about that because like I said, by this point, a lot of creepy things have happened in that apartment. And I was glad to have my father because my father has always been my safe place. So I was really, really sick. I had a bad fever. I was laying in my mother's room and I had the TV on. So I remember feeling really hot because I was starting to sweat the fever. My mother was working. She was actually working nights at this time at the bar. And so my father was home with me. 
and I was in the bed and I'm sweating the fever. So I remember kicking off the sheets because I was like super freaking hot. And at some point I must have dozed off. Well, while I was, I would say in the in-between, I wasn't quite dreaming. I wasn't quite fully asleep. Um, I started feeling like something was slithering up my leg, like a snake, you guys, slithering up my leg. And so I open my eyes and I go to look, but I can't move. I was legit having sleep paralysis. It was the one and only time I have ever had sleep paralysis. Now, as I go on with the story, I could blame sleep paralysis but like I said, in this apartment in particular, I had several experiences. So there is no one who can convince me that it was not paranormal. Okay. So, um, and I get that this is not everybody's thing and not everybody believes and that's okay. I respect you. If you don't want to watch, don't watch. It's totally fine. But, you know, I can't deny what I have experienced for myself. So, okay. So like I said, I'm in the bed. I'm trying to look and I can't move. My throat is in so much pain, right? So I'm starting to get nervous. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I can't move. And if you don't know what sleep paralysis is, it's basically you're in a state where your eyes are open. You see your room, you see all the things around you, but your body is still in a sleep state, so you can't move. So it's kind of like that in between. Um, this stays in here. And so I slithering up my leg. And so then it's coming up like across my belly and over my chest. And so I'm able at this point to see it because it's like on my chest. And you guys, it is the freaking sheet. The sheet on my bed that I kicked off because I was too hot and I was sweating with a fever. That shit is crawl. I'm sorry, excuse the, excuse the foul language, but I really get transported back in time when I tell this story. It is so freaking freaky. So it's slithering across my chest. So at this point, I can see that it's the sheet and it's moving on its own. So now I am freaking the hell out and I can't move. And I'm like trying to scream for my dad. And you know that feeling like when you're like when you're crying and you get that knot in your throat. Imagine having that with tonsillitis or strep throat. My throat was on fire. I could not yell nothing. It was the scariest thing ever so the sheet continues to move and it goes behind my neck you guys it's starting to wrap itself around my throat so i'm freaking out i can't move i'm like welling up with tears my throat is killing me and i can't scream for my dad so it's wrapping itself around my throat i feel it starting to get tighter and at some point, I must have made some kind of noise, some kind of tussle. Something must have happened because the next thing I remember is my father showing up in the doorway saying, Mama, are you okay? Did you call for me? And at that point, I broke out of the sleep paralysis. I could move. I sat up. I was hysterical, you guys, hysterical crying. And I couldn't say anything to my father. I couldn't explain what was going on because I could barely speak. My throat hurt me so freaking bad. And another reason why I feel like this wasn't just sleep paralysis is remember when I told you that I had kicked the sheet off of me? When I had gotten up because my father had, I guess, broke the sleep paralysis or whatever, the sheet was on me. The sheet was on me. And so I was hysterical crying. My father's like, mama, what's going on? You're okay. I'm here. Blah, 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 blah. He came into bed with me, wrapped me in his arms, and he stayed with me in the bed the entire night. He would not leave my side for the rest of the night. That is the story of the time, the one and only time I had gotten sleep paralysis in my haunted house. It was the only house that I've ever lived in where I could say, um, felt paranormal to me. A lot of things happened. I, there was even a time that I saw what I still believe to be the spirit that was like basically torturing me. Now you're probably asking yourself, Oh, how come you never said anything to a parent or anything? I didn't really come from a family where we spoke like that. If you've been with me for a while, um, I was raised with my biological mother and we have a very tumultuous type of relationship. I love her very dearly, but it wasn't a close-knit mother-daughter relationship. We just didn't speak 
So I was afraid of saying something that somehow it might have been blamed on me. It didn't help that my mother, you know, is bipolar. So, um, yeah. Um, I just didn't come from that kind of family. But yeah, you guys, I was thinking about that the other day and I was telling my husband about it. And he was like, what the F? <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude. And I had so many different experiences in that house. Let me know if you would be interested in hearing any other paranormal stories that I have from when I lived in that house. Um, there is one that just, jumps right at me right away so let me know if you're interested none of them are really long and dragged out or anything like that these are just things that had happened to me while i was living there so if you're interested i'll probably do another one let me know give the video a thumbs up let me know down in the comments that you're interested okay so we're at the point where we need to do a cash count so i'm gonna break out my calculator just to make the counting a little bit easier Okay, so into the bank we are going to be depositing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1200, 51, 52, 53, 5400, which is 1600 now, 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 83, 20, 40, 60, 84, 20, 40, 60, 80, 480, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 dollars, 10, 20, 30, 40, 45 dollars, so now we're at $21.75. These are a lot of singles, so let me split this up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 41, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60, 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80, 81, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 90, 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, 95 dollars. So we have a total of $2,270. This is what's going to go into the bank. This is going to cover all my bills for the month of December. I almost forgot. No, for the month of November. What am I talking about? <laughs> so this will cover all my bills for the month of November. Sad to see it go, but a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. So if you made it this far into the video and haven't already done so, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, smash that notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video and leave me, ooh, leave me a ghost emoji down in the comments. Leave me a ghost emoji. That way I know that you made it this far into the video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.